When I used to meal prep, I did this. Make a big batch of the same meal and portion it out into individual identical containers for the entire week. The first day I was pumped, the second day bored, and by day three I was eating a pizza on my couch. So I was stuck in this trap of wanting to eat healthy, but all I really was doing was wasting time, money, and food. But over the last few years, I have developed a few processes and techniques that make it easy for me to eat varied, wholesome, and flavorful meals throughout the week with not that much work. So instead of this very boring situation, I'm eating flavor-packed grain bowls, wraps, salads, pastas, soups, foods I actually want to eat. I'm Nisha, this is Rainbow Plant Life, where I teach you how to master vegan cooking at home. And today I'm gonna walk you through the five strategies I use to make meal prep interesting and a vegan meal plan you can make in two hours or less this weekend. The first step of any meal prep should start at your desk or table, not the kitchen counter. You wanna be intentional about what you're making and the order in which you do it. So take 10 minutes to plan out what you're going to make, what you need at the grocery store versus what you already have in your pantry and when you're gonna make everything. I promise this is gonna make the whole process move more smoothly and quickly. And our meal plan today can be prepped and cooked simultaneously. And there is a free PDF guide I've put together. It's linked below. It lays out the exact order of operations so you can be efficient with your time. For instance, if you're going to set something in the Instant Pot and forget it for like 45 minutes, you can then use that 45 minutes to do other things like roast vegetables in the oven, as well as make a sauce. One of the most important parts of mastering vegan cooking at home is to find ways to build flavor. And when you're really busy and pressed for time, a great hack for adding flavor to your weekly meals is to make an everything sauce. Every time I meal prep, I always make at least one everything sauce sometimes maybe two or three. And I call it an everything sauce because you should be able to pair it with everything or at least almost everything that you make that week. A few weeks ago, I did a video on mistakes that most new vegans make and I referenced relying on what I call building blocks to make easy meals throughout the week. An everything sauce is a building block. It is packed with flavor. It has a decent shelf life. It can be used in numerous ways to round out different kinds of meals and it can turn something really simple into a really tasty meal. And one of my favorite everything sauces is a tahini based sauce and that is what we're gonna make today for our meal plan. We'll start off with a half cup of a good quality tahini, add that to a food processor. I've included my favorite tahini brands in the PDF guide if you're interested. And then we're gonna add in some freshly squeezed lemon juice, a fourth of a cup, about four tablespoons. We also need some garlic. We're adding two cloves, just very roughly chopped up. And now it's time to add in some fresh herbs. That's gonna pack more flavor into this everything sauce. I'm using basil, dill, and parsley today and roughly chopping them up. If you don't have all three of these herbs, that's totally fine. You can use just one or two of them. We're also gonna add in a half teaspoon of ground cumin for some earthy, warm notes. A teaspoon and a half of Dijon mustard, it's gonna give it a tangy, sharp bite, and then some kosher salt to season, obviously, and of course, some black pepper. Blend that up in your food processor, and once you start to see the sauce come together, stream in a few tablespoons of ice water. It's gonna help thin it out into a pourable consistency, but the ice water is also going to make the texture fluffier and creamier. And we need about three to four tablespoons, again, depending on your desired consistency. This tahini sauce is great because it's so creamy, it feels indulgent, but tahini is really just sesame seed paste, so it's actually very wholesome. And it is quite thick, so if you want to thin it out, you can do that with more water. You could thin it out even more or add a little bit of olive oil to make it into a salad dressing. You can pour this tahini sauce over a grain bowl or grain salad. You can use it as a pasta sauce. You can even spread it on bread as an alternative to mayo or drizzle it over a wrap, spread it onto a tortilla, drizzle it onto roasted vegetables, beans, or lentils. You get the point. You can do a lot of things with it. If you want more options, for everything sauces. Another favorite of mine is cashew cream. Of course, you can make a basic cashew cream, but I have lots of flavor variations in my video on cashew cream, so if you wanna change things up, that video is linked in the description box below. Another type of building block I usually have on hand for meal prep is some sort of a shelf-stable condiment, flavor booster, or spice blend, like this spiced seed sprinkle. This seed sprinkle is really easy to make. We're gonna use pepitas, which are shelled pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds, a total of a half cup, and we're also gonna add some sesame seeds, a tablespoon of those, and a tablespoon of coriander seeds, which I love, but they are optional if you don't have them. You wanna heat up a medium frying pan over medium high heat, and once the pan is hot, we're gonna add in a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, along with all those different seeds, and then we're also going to add a teaspoon of Aleppo pepper, a half tablespoon of sumac, and a half teaspoon of flaky sea salt. Aleppo pepper is mild, a little fruity, a little earthy. I really love it. If you can't find it, feel free to use crushed red pepper flakes. Use about 
half the amount since they are quite spicy. And sumac is another ingredient I love. It's bright and lemony. Again, if you don't have it, you can omit it. Stir this mixture continuously so it doesn't burn. You need about two to three minutes or until it's golden. Then transfer it to a plate, spread it out, and allow it to cool before transferring it to a jar. This seed sprinkle took like five minutes to make and it stays good in your pantry for at least a few weeks, if not a month. So it's something you don't even have to make every meal prep. And it adds this really delightful crunch to all kinds of savory meals and that nice crunchy texture. It's gonna add a lot of interest to your weekly meals. And again, it's gonna take minimal effort. My next tip for meal prep is to make use of sheet pans. I love using sheet pans because one, they are pretty hands off so you don't have to babysit them the same way you would on the stove. Two, you can cook multiple different types of food on the same sheet pan at the same time. And three, they're pretty easy to clean, so tidying up afterwards is a cinch. Today we're gonna roast seven different things on sheet pans, which means we're gonna get a ton of variety in our weekly meals. And the first one we're gonna make is a combination of broccoli and cannellini beans. For our first sheet pan, I'm gonna use one can of cannellini beans. They are super creamy, one of my favorite beans. You can, of course, cook beans from scratch. I'll talk about that in the next tip. And once you've rinsed and drained your canned beans, dry them with a clean dish towel so they're not water and for the broccoli, I'm using about two crowns today. The exact amount you're gonna cook is gonna depend on how many people you're cooking for and you know how often you wanna eat these meals during the week. For the broccoli, don't throw away these stems. They're just as tasty as the florets and they roast beautifully. And if any of your florets are really large, just cut them through the stem and separate them out and transfer the broccoli to a baking sheet. For any florets that have a flat side like this, I like to arrange them flat side down because they're gonna brown better that way in the oven. We'll add the cannellini beans to the same tray and we're gonna coat everything with a bit of oil to roast in the oven. I'm using avocado oil today but I also like doing this with olive oil and of course season with some salt and pepper which is key to bringing out the flavors and vegetables and for a little subtle background heat we're going to add some crushed red pepper flakes just a little maybe a half teaspoon or less. Go ahead and use your hands to toss everything together. I'm doing it directly on the sheet pan today to save dishes, but you can also do this in a large bowl and then transfer it to the pan. We're also gonna do something similar with chickpeas and cauliflower, two of my favorite foods, but with a bit more seasoning this time. I'm starting this off by heating a small frying pan, medium heat. We're gonna toast whole coriander seeds, cumin seeds, and caraway seeds to make a quick and easy spice blend for the cauliflower and chickpeas. I love using whole spices where I can because their flavor is a lot more intense and fresh than pre-ground spices, and it's actually a lot simpler than it sounds. And we'll toast these for about three minutes, move the pan around frequently so they don't burn until everything is uniformly browned and just really, really fragrant. While the spices are cooling, we're gonna drain and rinse our canned chickpeas. Same thing we did with the white beans, pat them dry with a towel, and now we'll cut our cauliflower into florets. To cut the cauliflower, start by cutting off all those leaves at the bottom of the cauliflower. Then take a sharp knife, it can be a chef's knife or a paring knife, and cut it around the base of the cauliflower flour, moving your knife in a circular fashion. That's going to help loosen that really thick bottom stem. Once you can pluck that stem off with your hands, it's going to be pretty easy to pull apart the florets with your hands. Again, if you have any big florets, cut them in half from the bottom stem for cleaner cuts instead of cutting them from the top. And for all of those leftover cauliflower leaves and stems, I like to freeze those and save them for vegetable broth or for soups. Once the spices have cooled, we'll grind them up. I'm using a spice grinder like this. I think it's an incredible kitchen tool to have. You can also use a mortar and pestle. And we want the spices to be mostly ground, but still some texture to remain, because that's going to add more interest to the final dish. Spread the cauliflower and chickpeas out onto another baking sheet, and we're gonna add some olive oil or avocado oil, and then sprinkle it with our homemade spice blend, and season generously with some salt and pepper. The exact measurements for everything we're making today is in that free PDF guide again. You can find that linked down below. Toss everything together and then we'll roast this pan and the pan with the broccoli and white beans in the oven, 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes, tossing at the 15 minute mark. The vegetables are done when the broccoli is charred in spots and the white beans should be blistered and crispy. The cauliflower sometimes needs a little longer than the broccoli and it should also be nicely browned. And for our last sheet pan, we're gonna do something a little fun and different. We're gonna roast together on the same sheet pan, some store-bought gnocchi, vegan sausage, grape tomatoes, onions, and garlic. And when it gets roasted, the gnocchi gets a little crispy but still stays plump and chewy, which I absolutely love. If you have a large oven and three sheet pans, you could actually roast this at the same time as the broccoli and cauliflower because we use the same cook time and temperature. First, we'll roughly chop up one yellow onion. Keep the chunks pretty large so that they don't burn in the oven. And we're also gonna use four whole garlic cloves. We're gonna add one 16-ounce packet 
package of store-bought gnocchi to a sheet pan. Make sure the gnocchi doesn't have any eggs in there. There are lots of varieties that come shelf-stable, refrigerated, or frozen that are vegan-friendly. You just need to read the labels. To the gnocchi, we'll add one pint of grape tomatoes, and we're also going to add the chopped onion and garlic cloves. Now you're gonna crumble some vegan sausage right on top of everything. I'm using Beyond Meat sausage because that's our favorite, but if the vegan sausage you buy doesn't crumble, you can always slice it into rounds. Drizzle this whole mixture with some olive oil and season with salt and pepper. Toss everything together with your hands to ensure it's well oiled and seasoned. If you have some fresh herbs like thyme or oregano, go ahead and add a few sprigs now. And we'll bake this in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 27 minutes or until the gnocchi is a little plump. The tomatoes are bursting and the vegan sausage is nicely browned. This is the finished gnocchi situation. It's actually a great sheet pan dinner that you can have on its own, or you can kind of portion things out for the rest of the week and add it to other meals. When I meal prep, I always like to batch cook some sort of whole grain as well, because if I don't, I know I'm just gonna eat bread with everything, which it's not the worst thing in the world, but if you want something a little more wholesome, it helps to have a whole grain sitting in your fridge that you can use whenever you want it. And I usually batch cook my whole grains in my Instant Pot, but I know a lot of you don't have one, so we're gonna make it on the stove today. This week I'm making farro, which is probably my favorite whole grain. It's chewy and has this great nutty bite. If you're gluten-free though, you can try brown rice, wild rice, quinoa, or millet. We'll boil about two and a half cups of water and season it with salt. And once the water's boiling, we'll add in the one cup of farro, though you can certainly make a big batch and I like to infuse my grains with a little bit of flavor so today I'm gonna add in two bay leaves as well as a chopped shallot. For farro you want to simmer it for 15 to 25 minutes depending on whether your farro is the pearled variety or semi-pearled variety and the farro is al dente and chewy. Once the farro is cooked drain it and if you have another sheet pan free or just a large plate spread the farro out to help dry it out and to stop it from continuing to steam otherwise it can get a little mushy. To be efficient I usually cook my whole grain while other stuff is roasting in the oven. You can also batch cook beans and lentils at this time, and I have lots of resources on how to do that. I've linked those down below. And once you have your batch of grains cooked, you can use it in several different ways. Of course, plain as a side dish, but you can also turn it into, say, a breakfast porridge, or you can use it as the base for grain bowls, but you can also turn it into a grain salad. Just add in some fresh herbs, toasted seeds or nuts, dried fruit, and some extra virgin olive oil and lemon juice or vinegar. There's this weird perception that vegans have to make everything from scratch. You have to milk your own cashews and oats and you have to grow your own lettuce and tomatoes. If you have the time and space to do those things, more power to you. But most of us don't and that is where convenience items come in because they're gonna help you build out a lot more variety and options into your weekly meals. To me, a convenience item is something that comes in a package. It can be a single ingredient like this or it can be a processed food like this and it really makes it easy for you to get more home-cooked meals on the table. A box of pre-chopped salad greens for instance, is going to make it a lot easier for you to incorporate greens into your meals. A package of tortillas will make it simple for you to make wraps and burritos using the ingredients you've already prepped. And a box of pasta and a good marinara sauce go a long way, as do fresh herbs. All right, everything is now cooked. It smells really good. Now I'm gonna show you how to combine everything we've prepped with a few convenience items and pantry staples to create delicious meals throughout the week. With the gnocchi sausage sheet pan meal, we're gonna combine that all together. You can have it as is, add a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil, or add some marinara sauce and voila, you have a complete meal. But you could also take some of the blistered tomatoes and sausage, add them to cooked pasta, maybe some of that roasted broccoli too, and finish it with some marinara sauce. With the farro, we're gonna make a grain bowl, add some of the roasted broccoli and white beans on top, add in some salad greens, pour that tahini everything sauce on top, and finish with our spiced seed sprinkle. And with the chickpeas and cauliflower, we're going to stuff them into a wrap with the tahini sauce, add some salad greens, and that is what I call a two minute lunch. I've got even more ideas on how to combine these ingredients as well as step-by-step -step instructions in that free PDF guide. So be sure to click on the link in the description box below to download that. And if you make this meal prep, of course, tag me on Instagram. I'll see you guys later, bye.